Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about reflections. So, reflections. Reflections of graphs, really basic ones. So say we have a function, y equal to f of x. And so there's basically two uh, transformations of graphs we'll be looking at. So the first one is if you have a negative sign in front of your y value, so in front of f of x. In this case, you reflect the graph, reflect across x-axis. So really easy, cheesy way to memorize it is if the negative is in front of the y, you reflect across the x. That's how I memorize it. The other one is if you have a negative sign in front of the x. In this case, you reflect across the y-axis. So if you have a negative sign in front of the x, you reflect across the y. So wherever you have the negative sign, you reflect across the other one. So negative in front of the y, because y is equal to f of x. So negative in front of the y, reflect across the x. Negative in front of the x, reflect across the y. So again, negative in front of the y, reflect across the x. Negative in front of the x, reflect across the y. It's fun. <laughs> Let's do a couple, a uh, couple examples uh, of graphs. So uh, sketch. Sketch a really big C. Sketch. And I don't know. Let's let's do uh, f of x equals. Call it part A. Let's go down. Let's go down the alphabet a little bit. So uh, square root of negative x. Okay. So solution. So how would you graph this if you were doing it by hand? Um, well, first you graph the square root function. That's your core function, your base function, your mother function. So the square root of x looks like this. Boom. That's the square root of x. I won't call it f. Let's call it g. So g of x is the square root of x. So this is just from memory. So you have this, this memorized. Then you see the negative in front of the x, so you reflect... reflect across the y-axis. So we take this graph and we just reflect it across the y-axis. So what would that look like? It would just look like this dotted line here, right? Just a reflection across the y-axis. So I'll draw it over here. There's the y-axis, there's the x-axis, so x and y. And boom, there it is. There's the reflection across the x-axis. So this is the graph of square root negative x. Let's do one more. One more. B. Actually, two more. C. Let's look at f of x equals negative x squared. And let's look at f of x equals negative absolute value of x. So in the first case, uh, we have an x squared. So we have the standard quadratic function. It's also called a parabola. So the core function or the base function uh, is a u. Looks like this. All right. So this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. And that's the graph of y uh, g of x equals x squared. In this example over here, part c, our base function or our core function is the absolute value function. So the absolute value function looks like a v. Just think v for value, right? Easy, cheap trick to memorize it. v for value. Okay, so now let's do these problems. So in part b, we have a negative in front of the y value, right? So we reflect across the x-axis. So all you do is you take this graph and you just flip it down across the x-axis. So it would look like this dotted line here. So I'll draw it again on its own over here. It's just an upside down u, right? Because it's reflected across the x-axis. So that would be the answer to part b. In this case here, it would just be an upside down v. So it would look like this dotted line here. So I'll draw it over here. It's just an upside down v in this case. In the first case, it's an upside down u. And that would be the answer to this one. So if you have negatives in front of the actual function values, in front of the y values, you just reflect across, across the x-axis. Whereas up here, we had a negative in front of the x value, so we reflected across the y-axis. Hope that made sense.